Hello and welcome to another cookbook self-employed tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to record personal transactions in QuickBooks self-employed. Now, the test drive version, which is the version that I'm using right now that I'm sharing my screen on, this doesn't actually have all of the bells and whistles that you would have in a QuickBooks self-employed online version. So I'm going to have you use your imagination for a little bit, and then I'll talk through it and I'll show you some screenshots from one of my clients. So as usual, we just go to the transactions. Oh, one more thing before we jump into this, I did want to mention that if you do have other questions as far as QuickBooks Self-Employed is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and link my just my general overview tutorials of QuickBooks Self-Employed, the past two ones that I've done, and I'll link those down below so you can check those out before coming to this because I have, I am going to be assuming that you know certain things about QuickBooks self-employed as we go through this video. So let's, let's go back to the transactions tab. This is where all of your transactions come through from your checking account, your savings account, your credit cards, whatever account you have connected into QuickBooks self-employed. This is kind of like the holding tank of all of your transactions. And this is how you can code and account for them. So right here, what you can see already is that there have been some transactions already tagged. And what I like about this is, especially for this, when you do have a credit card connected to QuickBooks Self-Employed, when you categorize them, it'll show as a transfer. So basically it's saying it's coming out of the checking account and going into the credit card payment here. So that's that's nice that it can can manage all of those transactions. Now, in this column here where it says type, that's where you're going to see the business or the personal. Now, what you can tell is when you do categorize something as business, you can say specifically what it is. So this is business and it's a meal or maybe it's a client meeting or maybe it's whatever the case may be. You can actually expand this a little bit and type in, you know, met with a client, customer, colleague. You can also add a tag if you wanted to here. So meetings, if you will, and then you can color code that however you like. And then it'll show, it should show here that you did a tag. Let's see what happened. Did I go through that too fast? <laughs> there we go. Whoops. Oh, how weird. Okay. Maybe it's just a little glitch in the system right now. Anyway, once we do categorize things, you know, there's a way that you can categorize it as personal spending. And then here's where I'm going to have you use your imagination, just as the business side has different categories that pop up right here. The personal side also has similar feature where it shows, you know, like if this is dining out or something, you know, personal dining out versus your business. So you can categorize it in this column like that as well. For some reason, I'm not really sure the test drive version has just a standard personal spending, but you do have more robust options in the actual QuickBooks self-employed. Here is kind of like a little bit of a snippet from my client's screen where you can see the different categories. And then if you click this blue button here in QuickBooks self-employed, then you'll see a whole list of other types of categories that you can code your different expenses. I especially like the fact that there's like kids stuff, there's education. I don't see education here, but there are is an education category, entertainment, home services. You know, I, I like the fact that it goes into that kind of detail because this is one way that you can manage both your business and your personal expenses as a self-employed individual. So once you have all of those transactions coded, another really nice feature is when you come over here to the reports section, there is going to be another report listed here where it shows business and personal expenses. Give me one second and I'll grab a screenshot for that. And here is what the actual report screen looks like. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There you go. So when you come to the report screen, you're seeing the different options here. There is this business and personal expenses, and you can filter it by date or however you'd like to filter it. So when you look at the profit and loss, when you, when you select this report here, 
it does look similar to this report called the profit and loss, where it shows all of your business income, your business expenses. And then below here is where it shows your personal income and personal expenses. Obviously, I can't screenshot that for my client for you, but you can kind of envision it. It, it looks exactly like this, except it says personal. So again, that's another feature that I really like about the QuickBooks self-employed version, especially when you're trying to manage two different types of budgets as a self-employed individual, it just makes it really nice. I also like the fact that you can tag things and I think we'll have to get into that in another video, but you can also pull reports by tag. And the very last thing that I absolutely like about how QuickBooks Self-Employed categorizes personal expenses is because when you do come to year end and you need to download your tax details, your tax summary for your tax person, you can do that with no problem and it will not include your personal expenses. So if you do want, you know, the, the personal expenses, what it does is it on this Excel version, it adds a separate tab that says personal expenses. And so you can see all of those transactions listed line by line, but it's not going to roll up into your tax summary or your schedule C. So it's not going to hit like your, your, you know, personal entertainment is not going to hit tax summary or your personal dining is not going to hit the tax summary. So you can kind of like rest assured that they are going to be separated when it comes time for tax time. All right, that's all I have for you today. Now make sure you are subscribed to my newsletter because I am sending out monthly PDFs and freebies for you so you can get organized with your finances, with your business, and you can be prepared when it comes time for tax time. And I'll go ahead and put the links for all of that below in the description box. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye for now.